anymore. This is Joe Exotic. <laughs> Joe Exotic, welcome to the show. This is Chuck have... Chuck Shoot. How's it going? Oh, hey, Chuck. I have so many interviews today. I've got them all messed up. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, this is going to be the best one, I guarantee it. So how are you I, feeling? I hope. First of all, I want to ask you, because I know you had the health issues, lung cancer. Are you still uh, fighting, fighting that? Yeah, well, you know, I, I got my prostate cancer in remission, and I just got all of the tests done for the lung cancer, and I've got to go back to fix them to do biopsies to see how bad it is. Okay. Yeah, I just had a, a doctor on here who works with cancer patients using a high protein diet, but I, I know that they're not allowing you a lot of protein in prison, right? You're, you feel like you've been mistreated? <laughs> you get no protein in here, man. This is this is how jail and prison works, okay? The government requires you 3,000 calories a day, right? And they give you cake and cookies in the morning and noon at night to get that calorie count up there. And the only meat that you get is usually chicken, and it comes in a box that says institutional only, not for human consumption. No way, really? Yeah, yeah, really. Wow. Yeah, that's why That's why if I make it out of here alive, I am going to testify in front of Congress with the evidence that I walk out of here with, and I am going to change this whole system. Yeah, because... because what, we, what we do to human beings in jail... In prison, you could not do to a dog at your shelter downtown. Right. Didn't you say, too, that you feel like the guards are corrupt, like you saw them uh, selling drugs to prisoners? Oh, I know they are. They're, they're the ones that we, you know, that we inmates, uh, I have not, but I have uh, I have videos and everything else of, yeah, they sell meth for 7000 bucks an ounce, and they sell cell phones for 4000 bucks a piece. So do you think, um, are you following the Epstein case? Do you think that Epstein didn't kill himself because there may be uh, corruption? If these guards in your prison are corrupt, maybe the guards at his prison were corrupt and were paid hey, off. I, I, don't, I don't believe that he killed himself. No, not at all. Just like Whitey got killed, what was it, in uh, Springfield, Missouri, at the, at the prison there, the federal prison there. Uh, they, you know, you gotta, you got to have a guard in lock cell to let somebody in to kill him uh you know so i'm sure that that, that was a setup and you know it's no different than the bloody pictures that i put on all of my social media of what has happened to me and here my guards uh it's not the inmates that, that worry me it, it's the guards wow and, and so you feel like hasn't this changed your perspective on animals you don't feel like animals should any animal should be in a cage now that now that you've kind of been in a cage I, I will be the biggest advocate for for cageless animals. You bet. Absolutely. Wow. So then, what do what do you feel about the, this uh, the Carol Baskin's law, the big cat safety law? But then, like, because that doesn't really it still allows animals to be in captivity, but just okay. under the sanctuary, it's kind of corrupt, right? That, you felt well, like. That, well, that's why I'm in here. I'm I'm a political prisoner for the Big Cat Safety Act. Okay, because I fought it for 11 years because it doesn't help the big cat. What it done was it created a monopoly for the American Zoological Association and Carol Baskin's Global Federation of Animal Sanctuary. They're the only two that are exempt from that law. So what did they do with, with my animals? Look, if this would have been about my tigers, saving my tigers, and, and loving and caring for the species of tigers, they would have kept my zoo open and turned it into the most famous world-known sanctuary in the world. All they had to do was stop breeding, okay? But instead, they shipped all the animals out to Global Federation Animal Sanctuaries facilities so they could raise money, saying they've rescued those tigers. They're still charging to see them. And they let horses live in my house and destroyed my entire zoo. And today it's set to the ghost town. This wasn't about helping big cats this was about destroying and shutting up joe well yeah because it's funny when i go i'm in arizona and i so just today i was like well i don't this law seems interesting because when you google like tigers in arizona there's a bunch of places that you can go see a tiger so i don't know what what it really okay, changed absolutely. It, all it done was i you can't take a baby tiger and i can't let you pet it that's all it done okay okay it's it stopped private breeding of tigers Okay, in private places, okay, which we didn't do anyway. We 
were all licensed by the United States Department of Agriculture as zoos, okay? And we bred, and we swapped bloodlines, and we inter interacted with our animals. Uh, the only thing we've done was, was bred them, okay? They want to complain that there's too many tigers in America one month, and then the next month, the very same people are shipping some in from Peru or somewhere else because they don't have any rescue stories. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. So, if it's if they're endangered, we should be breeding more, right? Exactly. How do you ever stop something from becoming endangered? You breed it. Yeah. You multiply it. Well, and then... All we done, all we done was put them on a faster track to extinction. Yeah. Well, by, then, by passing that law. Talk about, because um, I know part of the reason that they put you away is because they said that you didn't euthanize the tigers correctly or something. So, And I know you're running for president. And um, and I just read your book, too, and you talked about um, your husband, Brian, and when he had HIV and he was in a lot of pain and they couldn't really do anything. So what is your stance on euthanasia? Because I know, like, in Canada, they have this law called the Medical Assistance and Dying Law. And it's very controversial because they're allowing people to basically choose when to die who are not terminally hey, ill. I, I would advocate for us to pass a law called the Right, the right to Die Act, and, and that goes for people that are sick or people that are given, given 30, 40 year sentences in prison with no, I mean, the way the system is, the federal system doesn't allow you parole, okay? And, and when I get to to the point, if I don't win my appeal or Trump or Biden doesn't make this right and let me go home, if, if when I get to the point that I'm sick, I, I want to be euthanized. I have no shame in what I did to those five tigers because it was the most humane way to put them down. My protocol with the USDA and my veterinarian said to put them down with a bullet because it was faster then tranquilizing them for an hour and letting them have seizures and puking and everything else so the vet could walk in and kill them. We all are going to die. Everything has to die. You know, and I'm not in here for, for, for killing those tigers. I'm in here for killing them without a permit. They're trying to say I should have had a permit. Okay, I'm in here for taking five endangered species without a permit. So if I would have left them alive for six to eight more months to go through winter and suffer in the cold of not being able to walk and, and, and take care of themselves, hell, they'd have me for animal cruelty. Right, because th these animals were, were sick and dying, I'm assuming? They were 23 years old. They should have died eight years ago. Wow. And that should tell somebody something that I took care of my animals to live that long. A tiger is not supposed to live to be 23 years old. They die at 14 to 16 years old. Yeah. So, but you feel now that, uh, I mean, you have regrets in terms of uh, keeping animals, give, not giving them enough space. Like, they should not have cages. They should have a... Okay, well, okay, that, that's still another thing. I had cages uh, that were two acres big, okay? Hmm. And, and cats, tigers are cats. They sleep 18 hours a day. They did not use two acres. They used one corner of it. Okay? It doesn't matter how big the cage is. I'm, I'm an advocate for, look, I was ripped away from my life. I was ripped away from my family. My parents died in here. I lost my marriage. I lost everything. Okay? To be put in a, in a cage over a, a political agenda. Okay? I am going to advocate that we are... The, the American Zoological Association is the number one organization in this country that are taking animals out of the wild and putting them in a zoo. And I'm here to tell you, if I make it out of here, I'm going to advocate to stop that because they don't belong in a cage in a zoo. They belong in Africa and India and Asia and Siberia. And that goes for every animal. Yeah, okay. So, because, I mean, I, I know when I watched the, the Tiger King show, I, I didn't see a lot. Of, I mean, it's been a while, but I don't remember – a lot of abusive things that you did. The only thing that kind of rub, rubbed me the wrong way was when you had the tiger cubs and they were kind of, you said they were craw they're crying out for their mother, right? I mean, that, that kind of like was like uncomfortable to watch that. Did that bother you at look, the time? You, look, look, okay, look, when you take, uh, okay, you, you have a choice. You either take the cub away from its mom and raise it to, to interact with human beings and be safer in, in a cage or you're going to put a 
work, uh, you're going to leave it with its mom and let it grow up, take each your employees and your staff because that's the options. No different than taking a, 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 a woman to the hospital that can't take care of her kids and ripping that baby away and putting it in foster care. We do it every day. Yeah. Okay. Um, so other things, it was interesting uh, going on your website and the, the, your presidential campaign. I found it, you had all these stances of different uh, different agenda items. Uh, one of the things that was so interesting to me was the Barbie stance. I just had to laugh. I was like, Bar-, and then I read it and I was like, you know, that's actually pretty good. It says, Barbie's not a good role model because she's about makeup and glamour instead of teaching young girls to just love themselves for who they are and not what they look like. That's pretty good. Every, every letter that I write back to to a kid, and let me tell you, I get letters every day from six-year-olds to 12-year-olds to 18-year-olds. And, and at the bottom of every letter I write back, I put, love you first, respect you first, and be proud of you first. Then tell everyone else to F on. Right. Isn't that what you... And, and, yeah. And the, our whole our whole society is about... Uh, now, now our whole society is about... Oh, if, if you don't get 2,000 likes on your post, you're, you're a piece of crap. You mean nothing to nobody. Well, you're getting a lot of likes, and uh, your Netflix show blew up and stuff, but you didn't really get to experience all the joy of that because you were in prison, right? Right. I've, I'm not in, I've not experienced any of my so-called fame. But like I tell everybody in every interview that I do, you know, everybody says I got you through COVID. I, I'm glad. I'm, I'm really proud of that. But don't forget that, A, I didn't film for Tiger King. They stole my footage from my show, okay? And my husband signed the contract and ran off with $2.6 million, all right, and left me with nothing in prison, okay? B, I, I'm a human being that lost my life for that show and, and, and the agenda. So please don't forget that I'm a real person and not just a TV character that got you through COVID. Yeah, that's fair enough. And, uh, you know, I mean, I looked at the stu- the evidence on your website and I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know how to read it all, but it does seem like there's enough new evidence that you at least deserve a new trial, that people can actually look at, at the evidence themselves and see the full story. There, it seems like there's a lot of things that were kept out of the first trial. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole lot that was kept out of the first trial. And, and are you looking at the Joe Exotic official website? Yes, uh, the evidence. I mean, there okay. was so much, and then I've heard you it's talk about it. Like, r- yeah. Yes, right. You I'll know, put that in the show I mean, notes so people it, can look for themselves as well. Yeah, it's joeyxoticofficial.com, and yep. there's a drop-down box for the evidence link. And every one of them has videotaped under mm-hmm. oath, doing depositions, admitting to perjury. And they've all handed over their cell phones, showing that the federal government knew they were lying and helped them lie. Okay. And then Alan Glover, the hitman himself, went one step further and even took the lawyers and, and the film people to the zoo and showed them where he hurt, he hid a weapon that they were going to kill me with if this didn't work. And ask yourself, why am I still here? Why is Joe Biden so hellbent that I'm not wrongfully detained in America, but he'll trade, he'll trade Victor Booth for Brittany Griner and six billion dollars for six five other people. All I want to do is go home. You can, they can keep their conviction. All I want is time served. Let me go home. Let me put this all behind me. Is there any movement on that? I know you you tried to get Trump to pardon and that didn't work out. And Biden hasn't. There's no movement. What about? I, I thought you were trying to get Kim Kardashian to help out. I can't get Kim to even wake up and, and acknowledge I'm alive. Hmm. Is there other prison advocates that can help out? You know, I have Solitaire Watch behind me. I have Out of the Box behind me. I have the Innocent Project behind me. Uh, It's the system. The system is corrupt. You know, I've been trying for six years to get a new trial. I'm finally on appeal. The judge that tried me set on my motion for a new trial for 19 months, a year and a half, before he said no. So I could take it to an appellate court, which will take me another year. Okay, this system in America has got to be overhauled because in and I hate to keep dogging on Brittany Griner, but in Russia we were all hell bent that she was wrongfully detained from the Biden administration, but she got arrested, charged, 
sentenced, convicted, sentenced, pled guilty, appealed in 10 months. And, it, and I've been waiting six years, along with everybody else in the system are sitting here six to 10 years waiting for a new trial. It's, it's, it's insane. Who is your? Who are your lawyers now? Are these private lawyers that are working pro bono, or I mean, it's not still the state lawyers, right? Oh no, these are these are private lawyers out of Dallas that are doing my appeal, and it damn sure ain't pro bono. Yeah, I'm I'm scraping everywhere I can to come up with money to pay these people. Uh, but but I, it, it it all goes back to the same thing from the very start of all of this. Uh, the Tiger team people that run around looking trying to get Trump's attention back in. 2020, uh, I was in solitary confinement during that. I had nothing to say about any of that that they pulled. The buses, the limos, the planes, all that. All they done was run around with chickens with their head cut off, trying to be movie stars for Tiger King 2. And they'd done nothing for Joe. They didn't find any evidence. They didn't file any motions. They didn't do anything but, but smile for the cameras and look good. And that's all I've done is made lawyers famous. Now my current lawyer is on court TV as a as a, a an analysis. Okay, I, but I haven't seen a lawyer's face since December the third of twenty twenty one. Do we have so you don't ha do you have a date for this appeal? Because I think there should be a new trial, and I think it should be televised, and maybe that'll be the thing that gets us out of twenty twenty four. If you got us out of twenty twenty during COVID, now twenty twenty four is a crazy year. Your trial could get us out of twenty twenty four. Well, my appeal, uh, I, I supposedly filed my brief. I haven't even seen what my lawyers filed. Uh, the, the, the government has an opportunity to file their briefs uh, with, by the end of next month, and then uh, the judges will make a decision. There is, there is no appeal trial. The judges will either say, yes, you can have a new trial. No, you cannot have a new trial. And if I can have a new trial, then I've got to go back for the same corrupt judge. And he will take a year to put me on his docket. Do you now? How do you feel about Carol Baskin at this point? If you, I think you've said that you've kind of made peace with her. You don't have any ill but, will. You know, first of all, me and Carol agree. She did a, a, a interview last week on the same news station I did, without knowing that we did the same news station, and we both said the same thing. Netflix made us look like we hated each other worse than we really did. Okay. She made money on, is this a podcast or radio? Podcast, but with video so, of me. So I, can, I can cuss? Yeah, can you cuss. can fucking swear and all, yeah. Okay, all right. So I made money making people believe that she killed her husband, which I believe she did, and she was batshit crazy because she wore shit around her head and, and all of her clothes were animal prints. She made money convincing people that I was an animal abuser uh, because I took baby tigers away from the mom. And that was the extent of our feud. And then Netflix came in and got Jeff and James and Alan to do this big murder for hire bullshit. And we have evidence on that same link uh, off their phones and recordings of Netflix producers paying them to do this. I know. Oh, it was the Netflix producers that paid. Uh, yeah, because it seemed like it, it took everybody. a long time. Like it was like a year before they finally caught you or whatever. Like they kept trying to get you to to pay this hitman or whatever. You have one minute remaining. It took them two years because Joe wasn't interested. Okay, yeah. and 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 if you watch the video that they used in court, they tried to get me to buy a gun. They tried to get me to buy a burner phone. They tried to get me to give them ten thousand dollars. Joe wouldn't play. Right. Hey, so they, I, had, they, had to, they had to make me look like an animal murderer. Yeah, it looks like you're going to uh, hang up here. But so I had one last question. Who do you think has a better mullet, you or Theo Vaughn? Me, definitely. <laughs> do you think you inspired his mullet? Who had it first? You had it first, right? I, I, don't even, I don't even know who had it first. But me and Matt Combs, uh, Henry Duff's husband, we, we both got the mullet thing going on right now. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well... Good luck to you, Joe. I'll put the show or the Thank notes you, in the show note or the links in the show notes so people can look at the evidence and make up their uh, mind for themselves. Appreciate you. Okay, thanks so much. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>